Hey everybody, Ben from the Bono Podcast, and welcome to Tournament Rosters Gnome Teams. So the Gnome Team has been released, or at least it's on pre-order. Hopefully you managed to get hold of yours. I'm sure they'll come back in stock otherwise, and if not, I'm sure third-party teams will be out quite soon. Now, Gnomes, brand new team, brand new players, brand new skills, brand new star players. Still a stunty team. Still tier three, so not expected to absolutely storm the podium at tournaments, but I think they're pretty good. And what we put together for you today is some tournament rosters using a variety of the star players that they've got access to. So let's have a look. First things first, the gnome team. Now, two things to call out. The illusionists have the trickster ability, which works like reverse sidestep. We've covered it in some of our other videos if you want a bit more detail, and we'll be looking at it at Theory Thursday this week as well, because it's just too cool not to kind of go through. Uh, also, the Woodland Foxes have the My Ball skill, which means that they can't hand off, they can't pass the ball, they can't use Fumblerooski or anything like that. If the gnome, if the gnome, if the fox gets the ball, it's sticking with the ball and if you've ever played fetch with a dog you'll understand why so with that in mind what we're going to do i've taken some uh, some some feedback from our previous roster videos um we're only going to talk through the skills now so the gnome team not two treeman not two illusionists not two beastmasters not two woodland foxes up to 16 line gnomes re-rolls are recommend three plus and if you've got the cash an apothecary is not bad so if you're running gnomes vanilla with no stars, you are probably going to have an absolute ton of money. So you are going to be able to fill your boots with re-rolls and that apothecary. And the reason I recommend the apothecary, your illusionists are really fun and you're going to put skills on them in a tournament. The beastmasters are really useful and you're going to put skills on them in a tournament and your woodland foxes are very, very clutch and it's useful to have access to them. If both go down, having access to that apothecary to save them to keep you going with one of them is really good. Now, don't get me wrong, the apothecary is probably the first thing you cut if you go down to three or lower rerolls, but if you've got the cash, and with gnomes you're kind of going to have the cash unless you're going for the big, big stars, um, then I recommend considering it which we don't normally consider in a tournament, I guess. Now, tournament rosters. We're going to talk through skills, but each of these rosters in this video is 1150. 1, 150 gold, 150,000 gold pieces. Now, the reason for that is because most tournaments are 1.1, 1.15, 1.2 million. So if your tournament is a little bit shorter, so ours, we tend to do 1.1 million because it kind of keeps star players available, but harder to buy um it seems to work out really well uh then you just kind of choose something to drop if you're going for a, a 1.2 million build you can add an extra thing in this roster it's going to be a re-roll or a gnome probably just to make your team fill out a little bit better so we figured that 1.15 is a good place to start start right skills um we are going to go with the tree man first so two tree men on this roster most of the time you're going to be running two tree men on the roster they are slow they take root it's a problem but they give you something that you haven't got anywhere else in the team which is a lot of strength and mighty blow plus one that's so useful especially in a tournament environment because you are going to try and get removals or even if it's just temporary removals you can time walk that player into the ground and stun them for a turn you get that that TVOP advantage, which is so, so, so important. And using trees to knock guys down lets you put the boot in elsewhere. Also, and I don't know if this is going to be the play for gnomes. I don't think it is going to be the play, but they do have access to throw teammate and your standard gnomes have jump up. So if your gnome doesn't die, they get five movement regardless as to whether they land or not. Really, really, really useful. Your positionals don't have right stuff, so you're not going to be throwing your illusionist over there or yeeting your fox down the pitch for a score. But paratrooping a gnome into the backfield on defense is really good, and having that just that clutch, that reserve opportunity play for throw teammate is so useful. So based on that, I think both trees are so important. Now, when it comes to trees, they've got stand firm, they've got mighty blow, they've got strong arm, they've got all the skills you'd originally want them to go. They are going to be punching stuff. So there's a couple of skills that you can never, ever, ever look up from. Block is fantastic on a big guy. If you've got access, and this is a tier three team, so you're going to probably have a good skill pool. You're going to have a couple of secondaries and a lot of primaries probably available to your team. So you can use your decent secondaries and go potentially pro on a Truman 
I like block, um, it's just the superior skill, right? The other thing you can kind of go, guard is normally like the other one if you can't get that. Guard, brawler is the poor man's kind of combat skills. Having guard on the tree man allows you to be guard tree, uh, guard beast master, guard beast master, guard tree, tree gets strength seven, tree gets strength seven, each of the beast masters gets strength four, and you're able to kind of pile on a, a strong opening round of punches on that front line, which becomes really quite scary. So definitely consider the treeman with guard if you don't have access to a double. But one thing I would absolutely recommend is with all that guard going on, you can take multiple block with a tree. And given that they don't have loner and that you are going to have team rerolls available, if you don't have a double to put on the tree, for block, then guard is potentially the correct thing to do. But having multiple block on one of your trees is just going to mean you get an extra mighty blow hit on the line of slaughter. And in fact, double multiple block with the guard from the Beastmasters is going to be really quite powerful. That's going to be strength five tree times two. That's going to be four strength five hits with mighty blow on the get-go if your opponent gives you enough targets. That's the other thing. So if you deploy Treeman with multiple block or guard on that front line, your opponent is going to, generally speaking, concede the line of scrimmage, which doesn't normally happen in a stunty matchup, unless it's obviously Ogres. They kind of give you a couple of victims, but actually there's no, there's no danger there. When you've got Treeman with that open, it's a pretty powerful hit. Giving them guard is going to help keep uh, any Beastmasters on the line safe as well. So guard, multiple block, block, those skills are wonderful. Season to your taste. Now, the Illusionists, they are the most interesting piece on this team. The Beastmasters have guard. That's what they do. The Foxes run to score things. That's what they do. The Illusionists, they're there to just play with your opponent's mind and give you upside sometimes where you wouldn't normally have it. I'm all over that. But the beautiful thing about tournaments is you don't need to wait for them to spike an MVP or get a touchdown, or sadly both, to give them dodge. You can straight up give an illusionist dodge. And I think that's always to be considered. I would be remiss by not pointing out that an illusionist does get leader on a primary. So if you're building your roster and you want an extra reroll in there because you spent the money on a big star player, for example, then absolutely fudge in one of your team rerolls on an illusionist, but be prepared to keep that illusionist safe for the game. This is not like chucking a leader on a troll for double. The illusionist is going to be in combat. He's going to be in there and he's going to get hurt. So while I don't mind taking leader on one of your throwers on a standard team, for a stunted team, it is a bit risky, but it will save you 50k, which is another gnome, which is going to be reasonably useful. So there's always a leader to bear in mind with Illusionist, but dodge is just the best thing to take on them for two reasons. One, it's going to keep them safe. And your Illusionist will normally be your primary or your, your secondary ball carrier until you get a breakout. Once they've got dodge, that dodge stunty edge three plus becomes three plus plus basically anywhere. Plus they have uh, wrestle and trickster. And that trickster skill with dodge and wrestle means that they're actually going to be alive when they reappear. Sure, if they've got the ball and they end up taking wrestle, the ball's going to come out. But you know what? If they didn't have wrestle, the ball was going to come out anyway alongside their brains. So giving them that dodge combos beautifully with wrestle and generally speaking they're going to be a ton safer and you get the beautiful upside of just being able to wander in basically anywhere you want to go and that's when the dodge combos beautifully with wrestle because you can three plus three plus into a cage you position your beast masters your woodland foxes around there to take away as many supports as possible you've got a two die up block you've got wrestle you've got a team reroll the ball is hopefully popping out. If the ball doesn't pop out, your guy is standing there in the middle of the cage. He's about to get absolutely destroyed. However, you've got Wrestle, you've got Sidestep, you've got Trickster. Trickster is going to allow you to escape and potentially tag other players or just get free and Dodge and Wrestle is going to help keep you alive. So in a tournament setting, the Illusionists with a bit of Dodge are going to be so much fun. But one thing I will say, all of this team, whether it's Illusionist, Beastmasters, your standard gnomes, they've got that wonderful skill set of jump up and wrestle, which means that other doubles are beautiful on them. So strip ball is fantastic. Tackle is going to help make you a very slow but very effective safety. Sure, uh, sure hands is going to be useful as a ball carrier. I'm not too fussed by that. I think um, you're able to kind of spread out and defend reasonably well with gnomes, so you're not too worried about... Uh, 
just pick up the ball last secure it pick it up last and burn a team reel if you need to but i wouldn't worry too much about that um the other agility skills on all of the gnomes I means sidestep is going to be useful and illusionists if you want to go all in on illusionist and in a tournament i don't think you should I think you want to spread the skills around. Otherwise, a dodge sidestep illusionist is pretty wicked. But they've got access to other skills as well, like on the ball or safe pair of hands. But quite frankly, when it comes to the illusionist, dodge is enough in a tournament setting. You're going to get access to star players for most tournaments that mean that the ball carrying duties uh, kind of can be taken elsewhere, which makes your illusionists pseudo blitzers. And that dodge skill combo with trickster is really useful on offense and defense. So dodge for the illusionists beast masters so beast masters are the lads who start with a little bit better armor they can't be thrown neither can the illusionists but they do have guard guard is fantastic they are going to be mostly in combat they've got armor eight which is better they're still stunty and they do have wrestle so they are reasonably hardy um dodge is again gonna help you get to where you want to go comboing beautifully with stunty but also when your guy gets punched back you're a roger you've got wrestle and dodge and that's absolutely fine so dodge is going to be fantastic with those guys sidestep if you have a cap on the amount of skills you're going to be taking which will hurt this team if you're at a tournament where there's not two or not to four skills of the same type you're going to have to start kind of reaching for gnomes sidestep becomes really useful on a beastmaster at that point if you can block is not bad on this guy but honestly dodge is better wrestle keeps him safe dodge keeps him safe if you put block on there sure it keeps him standing but it's not as safe as having wrestle and dodge and he's already got wrestle dauntless is quite fun because he does have kind of strength access but uh, on a secondary but that's true of all gnomes then you come to the woodland foxes now these guys don't have agility or anything on a primary skill access so if you want to put a skill on a fox it's going to be a double foxes are not players they are animals they are pets they come along and they serve a purpose and that purpose is to range out and distract or just burst through and score that's all you want to do a lot of times if you're running some decent stars you're only going to be deploying one fox on the pitch at a time anyway and they're there to just be your ace in the hole the suicide blitz through loads of tackle zones to take a two die up hit with no skills just to see if you can roulette them roulette the ball that's perfectly fine for a fox you don't want to put skills on them anyway but if you ever get the chance to add a bit of movement the fact that they are edge two plus plus and sidestep and dodge does make them pretty useful but otherwise i really wouldn't worry about it in a tournament setting then you've got your standard gnomes and there's this one skill that i'm not sure i've touched on but it's called dodge and it makes stunty players very very useful so if it comes to your line gnomes and you've got some spare points a couple of line gnomes with dodge are going to be absolutely clutch they are the speed difference of an edge three plus movement five piece versus an edge three plus stunty dodge piece is monstrously different it's just it's just it just it's like event horizon where the quickest point between two, the quickest distance the smallest the shortest distance between two points is this but if you fold space it's like this that's the difference here when you have a dodge player um who has stunty and edge three plus so a couple of those guys with dodge is brilliant diving tackle again is not the worst as well it's it's it, it's gonna come up and having a couple of diving tackle if you do have a skill cap may not be the worst thing it's going to upset some gutter runner players so i'm not personally a massive fan of that but i guess it's kind of good and if you get the chance at some kind of double on a line gnome dauntless is really good you've already got wrestle but dodge is that first thing i'd rather have and three plus plus three plus plus in to take a two die up with wrestle knowing that i've got a team reroll on the hit than i would to have a three plus team reroll three plus team reroll then a two die up but i've got wrestle i've got dauntless it's just it's just it's better to have dodge but dauntless is really fun as is strip ball because that's going to take that two die up hit and just be like right anything but a skull i'm good to go dirty player sneaky git on these guys is going to be useful because you are going to get a ton of foot in mouth situations and by that i mean your players foot in their players mouths you're going to have guard kicking around you're going to have supports kicking around and you're going to have targets on the floor because your core skill is wrestle so putting the boot in every turn if you can is a very valid and important part of the gnome strategy so dirty player if you can get it is wonderful as is sneaky git the last skill i want to talk to you about on the standard line gnome though is kick I know I always bring up kick, but I tell you what, it's always really good. The downside is that it is a double and it's just not as good as putting some of those other skills on, for example, your Treeman or something. 
but you've got a, a strong front line so being able to drop the ball deep and split them or drop the ball close and then use some of your dodge players your fox or whatever to try and get in there and snag the ball is very useful and contemplate taking kick on a line gnome if you are playing with rodney Roachbay. because if you deploy him near your line of scrimmage and you drop that ball short and they don't pick it up if you're within three squares of rodney at the start of his activation he just yoinks that ball this is the best onside kick in blood bowl and kick is going to help pull that off it's not automatic but oh my god if you can pull it off you have basically stolen a possession and that is definitely worth taking over a block gnome i really think so we talked about re-rolls the reason I say three plus, and that in does include leader, so you can take two core plus one leader, um, is you don't have dodge on a lot of your guys, and you're going to be punching up a lot of the time. In a tournament setting where you've got re-rolls, though, three, four re-rolls is more than enough. I wouldn't go five. I wouldn't go four plus leader. Three plus leader, yeah, you can go with. Two plus leader is the minimum I'd want to go. It seems a little extra, and you may be just better at playing small and missing small than me, but just what you're doing with the gnomes is taking opportunities and taking chances and actually just having that extra team reroll is going to buy you half a turn each half and that can be absolutely massive anyway on to no not onto the rosters we've talked about star players and in tournaments star players are getting a little bit taxed generally speaking though not so much for for tier three so we're going to have a very quick look at some of the stars that are available for the gnome teams because you can get everything you want for a million for gnomes. Most tournaments are a little bit more than that, so it makes sense that what you're adding to your team is star players. And available to all teams, you've got Graken, Crumbleberry, Helmet Wolf, and Acorn. Right, Helmet Wolf, Chainsaw, always fun. Chuck him in. You're going to have victims on the ground as well because of Wrestle. That's quite good. Graken, Crumbleberry, coming in at 250 is a very expensive price to pay. You've already got two Strength 6 hitters. A Strength 5 isn't bad. You've already got Strength 2, dude. But actually having access to the Halfling with sure hands and is, is reasonable, but I don't think is a must-take. This boy we need to talk about. Acorn, I think, is going to be super fun in Gnomes. And the reason for that is Acorn has always paired brilliantly with a team that's got a couple of guard kicking around. This team starts with two guard, and you're likely to take guard on one or two of your treemen as well. So with that in mind, Acorn's Claws Frenzy ability is going to turn from a wishful think into a very successful four die block most of the time. That means this 80k star player is going to be putting out more damage than most 200k star players now it's circumstantial he's a bit vulnerable but with his re-rollable dauntless and one guard you're going to be two die blocking most of the time with acorn i would consider him a secret weapon very much like the foxes he's very very vulnerable but Acorn is going to do some horrific things along your front line, and you can always suicide blitz him in as well. So Acorn, I think, is an absolute bargain for ADK and pairs beautifully with this team, both in theme and playstyle. Then you've got the big list of stars that has been added to by the most recent joiners here from Spike17. So Deep Root and Griff are your big stars here. Was Morg not on that list? How have I not put Morg on that list? You plum. All right, we've got a Morg roster to come up. Anyway, Deep Root and Griff. 280k a piece right deep root is your third tree with mighty blow plus two and remember you've got guard on that front line you go guard tree deep root tree guard that gives you one strength seven hit if you've got a bit of multi-block let's just go best case scenario mentality you've got multi-block multi-block that's five strength five or seven hits with uh plus one or plus two mighty blow that is the delete key that's this one here that's oh i've got three trees i'll just go one two three with that button because that's exactly what's going to happen to the other team sometimes so huge investment but it's going to pair beautifully with the gnome team and griff i asked trips this a couple of times now he is a griff connoisseur uh feels a bit whiny and foodie today which is not the gnome thing he was like, yeah, I mean, any team that likes to play Blood Bowl <laughs> loves Griff, and Griff is going to do a whole bunch of stuff for this team. There's nothing bad here. There's just nothing bad. If you can take Griff and you're not absolutely smashed by either of these and the Megastar attacks, you can do it, and I love it. 
Grim Iron Jaw, Mighty Zug, and the White Dwarf, they all kind of give you mid-range combat pieces. Each of them gives advantage. Grim having Frenzy Block is wonderful. Zug being a cheap strength 5 piece is wonderful. The White Dwarf being able to give other dudes Mighty Blow and stuff and is, is good. They're all good. I wouldn't auto-pick them. Rumbolo is, however, quite interesting. Um, Rumbolo and Ruana are comparable pieces because they're both tiny players riding around on an animal with horns. Rumbolo comes with block and tackle, so it's a very useful safety, whereas Rowana is a bit more um, a bit more swingy, but does have a really superb auto leap ability. They're interchangeable, and it depends whether you're going high ceiling, low ceiling, or just based on theme, but they're both quite good to take because they're cheap, access to horns, and that can be very useful. But better is Carla Von Kill. Coming in at, what, 220, 230, she just gives you that wonderful bit of speed, and strength, and agility, and block, and dodge, and she's just fantastic to just be there to help the team. Barrack Farblast, bit of a meme, wouldn't worry too much about him. Cindy Pie Whistle. if we look at some of these rosters, Cindy is so cheap, you can always drop a reroll and take Cindy. And I, I really, I haven't included her in the rosters, because that's all you need to say. If you want to take a bomber, and if you want to do it, you can do it. 50k. You lose a reroll, you put leader on an illusionist, or you just lose a reroll. You lose the apothecary. Most rosters, you can just drop a gnome and take Cindy. Sure, she's a secret weapon, but you've got that wrestle guard line. And you're throwing bombs, and you're trying to flip the ball out, and Rodney Roachbait is swinging in there and just angling for an opportunity to take the ball. Cindy's going to combo brilliantly with this as well. Puggy's always good. Rodney is, I think, the star here. And 70k means that wherever roster you're looking at, if you can drop a gnome or drop a reroll and take him, I think you should. That extra bit of movement's great. Extra bit of armor, I think, is great. The fact that he's just able to yoink the ball for free is wonderful. And with OTB as well, he starts off being a pretty good ball carrier in the backfield. Movement six and on the ball means he's basically double the speed of any of your gnomes on that first kick. So love a bit of Rodney as well. Okay, onto the rosters. So we're going to start with two small stars. This roster comes in at 1.15 million and has 15 players. You get both your trees, both your illusionists, both your beastmasters, both your woodland foxes, five line gnomes. So 13 players on your roster, plus two stars, four rerolls, and and the apothecary. And you get Acorn to just try and pull off some guard shenanigan and Rodney Roachbait to be your primary ball carrier. That is an absolute spoiling of a team. You've got 15 players, 15 and four rerolls and the apothecary to keep an illusionist, a beastmaster, a woodland fox or a line gnome that you've given dodge alive for another round. I've got even a tree, right? Even a tree. That's a big hit. This roster is packing. You don't have Griff, you don't have Deep Root, but this is going to give you Gnomes. This is a low to the ground, ground game here, but you've got Rodney in the backfield doing stuff. You're going to be able to deploy your Illusionists in combat. You're going to be able to upgrade them with a bit of dodge, so they're going to be able to bit bounce in there, pop the ball out. When they get strike back, they're going to be able to bounce out. Your Woodland Foxes are going to be able to sneak in there and grab it. Your Treemen are going to be murdering things. Your Lime Gnomes are going to be putting the boot in. And then you've got Acorn to just YOLO in and try and claw something that he really shouldn't be clawing. This is a superb and mad fun bit of team here. And at 1.15, you can go up or you can go down without a concern. If this is a 1.1 million, maybe you drop a reroll. Maybe you drop the Apothecary and just absolutely go for it. The only thing I would say, and this is true of all of the rosters, is... Um, Illusionists, Woodland Foxes, you can drop one of them down to becoming a Line Gnome to save yourself 10k, if that's going to get you a Gnome. Never go zero Illusionists, never go zero Woodland Foxes, but if you are, if you want the extra manpower, you, in some circumstances, you're going to have 30k left over. You can drop an Illusionist down or drop a Woodland Fox down and take two Gnomes instead. That is perfectly fine and probably the right thing to do. But you don't need to at 1.15. Four re-rolls. And you're going to have dodge skills to put on your players. This is fantastic. This is absolutely cooking. It is not going to be um, Hackflem, and it's not going to be Griff, 
but it is going to be an absolute ton of fun if you want to play gnomes really play gnomes and get the full gnome experience you've got rabid beasts and fishermen just doing stuff and i think this is just the best roster in blood bowl but maybe you want to try a little bit harder so one and a half stars and we get two treemen two illusionists two beast masters two woodland foxes four line gnomes for a total of 12 players i've got four re-rolls on this roster and you take rodney roachbait to be your ball carrier and just have that little you know yoink the ball ability and then you upgrade acorn harsh i know some critics are going to come after me you upgrade acorn to rowana to rowana forest foot now you're at 140k here so you've got 10k so you can actually swap her out for another star that's uh, 170 so um this is kind of pick your uh, pick your cavalry you get rowana or you get rumbelow and it really depends what you're going to be up against i've gone with rowana here i think rumbelow is technically the right thing to do but you've got this beautiful combo of these wrestle players, and some of them have got dodge now, which is pretty fun. And you've got Roachbait, who's going to be able to just pick up the ball from three squares away. And you've got Rowana. Now, Rowana is very interesting because you get once per game the ability to just take a three plus leap with a reroll, no matter what tackle zones you're going into. So you're always going to be able to get a strength four hit on the center of a cage if you really need to with a three plus plus so it's absolutely not automatic and it is probably better to take rumble because you know what you're going to get but with Romani, you still get a dodge piece in the backfield with movement six strength three plus horns no combat skills which is bad and lona which is bad but you got range there in the way of a safety rumble is going to give you a better safety but Romana is going to be better at just taking the opportunity to turn that ball over and in a tournament environment gnomes are not fast but they are quite sticky when it comes to defense so turning over the ball and just taking that one nil on defense it's going to get you a 2-1 victory most of the time so the upside there of rana is real versus rumble but you can take all of this you've got four re-rolls the only thing you could do is take leader drop a re-roll take an apothecary to keep your um your boys and girls here up and running when needed and again, that really depends on what your skill package is and whether you want to take leader on one of your illusionists or go double dodge with them. I think either is good. Let's upgrade it even further, although I don't think that's true. But you can take Carla, and Carla is notoriously not bad. So this roster comes in at 1 one two zero so you've got a bit of cash to play with you got two dreamen two illusionists two beast masters two woodland foxes four line gnomes so that's 12 players plus carla we've still got four re-rolls and it's coming in at 120 at well 1 million 120k so carla is your star here but what she does is give you that mid-range blitz up carla is perfectly acceptable as a ball carrier very acceptable as a ball carrier being strength four and blodge is pretty useful for that and I think that's not a terrible way to do it. You can use Carla to just control the ball or use it as your blitzer and use one of the other guys. What this does do is that frees up the pressure for your gnomes to be overly com combative. You've got Carla here to be a bit more mobile offense. Now, you're looking at 30k spare cash. This is where you can kind of flip flop a few things around. You can drop a Woodland Fox, you can drop an Illusionist and take two gnomes instead to boost your numbers up. You can drop a reroll. There's things you can do here, but really this gets you Carla with 12 other players and a bit of cash to play with. Carla is very, very, very good. But the thing I think I would do in this roster is drop that reroll put leader on an illusionist that will give you an extra 50k and that gives you enough money to take acorn or rodney roachbait and then i think rodney roachbait carla von kill hitting up 1140 with 14 players three re-rolls and a and a leader that is a competitive roster you've got rodney to be your primary ball carrier and you've got carla to just be awesome on the pitch that is is an interesting flex and i wish i'd written that up on the screen but you can take carla with a bunch of stuff but like we said you can drop a reroll play with some cash you can add cindy to a roster you can add rodney roach bait to a roster as long as you've got the space and it's always worth considering oh, no. it's griff so griff is um a bit of a villain really he's not hack blem sure and he's not morgue but he's he's the next guy <laughs> he's the next guy because he does absolutely everything he's fast he's agile and he's strong 
he's a superstar and that's okay this roster comes in at 1140 so you've got 10k to play with two treatment two illusionists two beast masters two woodland foxes four line gnomes for 12 players three re-rolls and griff so this is just is that serious yeah serious wow that's amazing you put leader on an illusionist you got four re-rolls a full team and griff that's fantastic. You're a little light on numbers. You're going to lose a Woodland Fox and you're going to lose a Gnome, but you've got Griff. Guys, I'm not going to talk about this roster anymore. I'm just showing numbers here. You can take Griff and the fact that you can take Griff is enough of a reason to go, oh, okay, that's a good roster. And so is this. So we talked about Deep Root at the beginning of the video. We talked about how trees are wonderful at smashing stuff. This is the same roster as the, uh, as the, as the um, Griff one, two trees. Three with Deep Root, two Illusionists, two Beastmasters, two Woodland Foxes, four Line Gnomes, so 12 players plus Deep Root, three re-rolls and the leader option there. Sadly, you would have to fudge a few things to be able to afford to take Rodney Roachbait. By a few things, I mean you'd have to drop a re-roll and maybe downgrade one of your other positionals. But this roster here is just about supporting the trees and going for deletion. And also Deep Root's a very cool model and trees just work better in threes because you're just throwing more Mighty Blow. Look, Deep Root's Mighty Blow plus two is fantastic. It's He's strong. You've got Guard there to support him to make sure he's rolling three dice all the time because that takes away any worries about Lona. That is horrible. And this is going to be, I think, depending on the skill packages because Deep Root and Griff are both mega stars, so you might lose a couple of skills. This is going to be a potent roster and I would not, I would absolutely not be surprised to see somebody take um, this roster and drop a reroll and a gnome to take Rodney Roach bait in there as well or Acorn to just absolutely maximize stars. It depends what tournament roster you're going with, but the point is you've got a full gnome team here, three rerolls, probably four with leader and Deep Root, who is legitimately one of the best stars in or the game. Or you could just take the best star in the game. Actually the best star morg and thorg 100 1 million 150k two trees two illusionists two beast masters two woodland foxes three line gnomes two re-rolls add in your leader re-roll there for your third 11 players plus morg and thorg the downside of this roster is you're starting off a little bit low on re-rolls probably going to be fine but a little bit light on players. And the reason that that's a concern is because although Morg is amazing, you're going to be able to throw one of your three line gnomes, uh, but otherwise he's just going to be able to run around and absolutely destroy stuff. And you've got your trees and your guard boys to support and your illusionists can dodge in there, pop the ball out. This is kind of a Death Star based on Morg. And even though Morg is always fantastic, the, the, the kind of difference here is that Morg is faster and more able than the Tree Man, but doesn't necessarily have the agility to be the YOLO score now player that you need him to be. So the only concern here of running Morg in with two trees is you can end up with two Death Stars instead of one big Death Star. And I don't actually know why that's a negative. You're all in on Morg. But you've also got a ton of known players here. You've got your Illusionists, you've got your Beastmasters. Your Beastmasters can still combo with trees and do stuff and help out Morg every now and again. Your Illusionists and Foxes are still there to just be agile and annoying. And you've got a few line gnomes there for you to YOLO in and try and take the wrestle block. You're a bit light on players, you're a bit light on rerolls, but you are a bit not light on having more. All right, so gnomes, bit of a longer video than I intended, but there's a lot to unpack here because it's a brand new team. And I think you'll agree, there's a ton of brilliant options now. This is the exploring phase. This is the thing I love about Magic the Gathering. They drop a new set every three months and you kind of go, ooh, how does this work? Well, you know what? We've got gnomes. We kind of know how they work vanilla. We don't know how they're going to work with some of the star player combos, but quite frankly, anything on that list looks like i would be concerned to play against it none of that is easy none of that slim none of that is like yeah this would be all right even the rodney acorn combo you've got two trees you've got some guard and you've got acorn acorn's going to be able to destroy stuff and so is the trees that is offensive skaven coach here i deploy against that line i put three linemen on the line those linemen are probably gone then i'm playing with eight or nine players on my roster and then I've got Wrestle slowing me down. And then you've got Rodney Roachbait just picking the ball up and doing stuff. And that was with potentially the lowest powered roster on this screen. This is wicked. Gnomes are not going to be the underworld. 
but they might be able to beat Underworld every now and again. And that is enough for me. Anyway, let me know if there's something I've missed, if there's a combo you think is going to be particularly good. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap up and we'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl combo. uh, combos. More Blood Bowl, Blood Bowl content. It's been a lot of videos today. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel even further, please like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Or come join us on YouTube members or in Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to some content, some loot, early access to basically everything we do, as well as regular competitions. Or you can pick up some Bonehead Podcast loot either on our website at boneheadpodcast.com. We've got the Dungeon Bowl things. We've got tokens and stuff like that. Or on our Spreadshirt site as well. Everything you do just helps us make more content and hopefully do it of better quality. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Happy blocking.